Hello world, welcome. I'm Don. It's been a little while, but in today's video I'm going to take a look at balancing out a photo, so the different elements in the photo and kind of bringing them together to help lead the eye where you hope it'll go. So this image is nothing particularly special, just a, a holiday snapshot. Uh, I would say it's a it's an average photo of a stunning location. Um, but as I was processing my holiday photos, I was just going through a few different techniques, and I thought maybe some of those techniques might be interesting for some of you to see. So that's all it is. Me working through uh, balancing th things out, bringing the sky down a little bit, shaping things, looking for where the eye might jump off the page, and, and seeing, how I can, seeing how I can help that in a... In a quick and subtle way. So let's go ahead and jump in and take a look. All right, so this is the image. As I said before, this is just a snapshot from a hike one day. So, you know, it's not a, not a wonderfully stunning image or anything, obviously a stunning location. Um, but uh, it really does this example quite nicely, I think. So looking at this image, what can I see? I can see that there's lots of interesting sort of detail in that sky there that I'm definitely going to want and I can see that in order to balance things out I've shot it a little bit dark make sure that I kept all the detail in the sky um, so down here I'm going to want to be brightening things up and, and evening this out and I can see if I look up here at the histogram that um, I, you know I've got some I've got some space there hello looks like that might be a thin blue line there so we will we'll, we'll see how that goes as we go and what is our starting position here so I, i've just clicked reset on this um if i come over here i am in dxo wide gamut which of course is giving me a bit more space on this histogram the histogram shows up differently uh, if you're in wide gamut if i um, come back here to legacy you can see it um, doesn't have quite as much space there and it pushes down that way a little bit as well so I'll just go back to wide gamut um, awesome so and uh, it's just yeah soft proofing is in fact is in fact off and we can see this too I mean if you watch that histogram um, up there if I put it into sRGB which is where it will eventually go um, suddenly you can see that my darker areas are are bumping up against here so it's it's always worth a quick peek but let's let's jump in and do that for which i have come to show you so let me come back to the light tab and um, maybe we'll just pop that histogram down here out of the way a little bit more so starting out i'll just start with basic exposure adjustments i'm going to um maybe just thinking maybe go up around 0.6 let's just see and it's probably I don't want it to be too bright I'll just take that down 0.6 is probably pretty good um, I think that's got me kind of around uh, I'm looking at the, the numbers there it's got me around a middle gray ish possibly a touch darker for that sand maybe I'll just maybe I'll just bump that a touch yeah now now it's just a touch brighter than middle gray which I would have guessed it probably actually was just a touch brighter than middle gray and you can see that my histogram has um, you know stretched out here we have taken more advantage of of what's going on so having done that the sky is now a bit brighter and we can see the sky represented here so it's got some separation from a lot of the rest of the image down here um, and we just want to equalize those things a little bit more so I'm going to do that um, with local adjustments and uh, so in here I'm going to go ahead and add two things uh, first of all I'm going to add a control line um, and then after that I'm going to add a, a good old-fashioned graduated filter so the control line is going to sort of target more of the no, sorry, I get that straight. Uh, it's going to target more of the sky um, more completely. Uh, and then 
I'll, I'll sort of add to that after the fact. So do that, I'll pop my picker sort of up here, should be pretty representative. I'm just gonna have a peek at what that selects. I'm just gonna have a peek what happens if I come down here. Does it even change? It does not. That's cool. So I was probably in a pretty good place to start. This is a little fuzzy here, um, but I think I'm just going to, I'm going to um, sort of live with that. I'm gonna see if I can, see if I can, what, what can I do to affect this? Try to, yeah, I, I quickly start to bite into my clouds there too though, and I, I don't overly want to do that. So maybe right about, 54, 55, 54, maybe right about 54. This is close enough, just to see that balance. I'll come out of the mask view and see what difference it actually makes. So I've got that selection and I'm just gonna want to um, drop that drop that down. And I'm dropping it down sort of, you know, all together. And I'm just gonna see, cause I don't want things to go too flat. So I'm just gonna play around with my um, my highlights, maybe even my midtones. I'm just going to do a quick before and after on this. So let's brought it down a little and maybe go a little bit further. How about there? Yeah, that's probably a bit closer to what I was sort of after. Yeah, nice. Okay, so we'll leave that like that. And then the second layer that I've been doing with this type of sky recently is to just add a graduated filter. And you know, leaving it fairly close to the top, I want mostly this to, to ease its little way down into things. So we'll pop that there. And I'm just gonna bring that exposure down a touch more. Um, and it just helps to sort of funnel funnel the eye into the scene overall which yeah you know, so it's just brought those two things together we've still got um you know pretty good detail through here and in fact in fact i think i might just bump up my overall exposure just a touch more i feel like especially with the clouds darkened that that might be able to handle that Maybe leave it there because I'm gonna I'm gonna um, have a have a peek at contrast momentarily as well. So having done that, I'm just gonna double check now. So I'm down 0.25. Let's see, 0.3, 0 0.4. Cool. Um, and and I won't go too far with that. I'm not a big fan of you know. Sometimes we in the pursuit of dramatic skies, I, I feel like sometimes it's easy to go too far and to make them really chunky, which I don't know about you, but I almost never see that in reality. Okay, so now while I'm in here, just uh, I'm gonna I'm still on graduated filter. Something tells me that on graduated filter, I, I can I can experiment with this. Actually, I'll do this right now. I'll, I'll do it live. We'll see. I think with with graduated some of them, uh, particularly the control point ones, you have to click plus for a new mask. With the graduated filter. If memory is serving me, I think I've noticed that you don't need to click plus, but let's just test that. Um, so that's all going on up there. And if I do this, let's see if it, if it gets its own set of controls, which it did. Yep, so that, that verifies. So for the control point ones, it seems that you would need to do plus to get a, an independent one. Um, but for the other masking, not necessarily. So. Um, I guess it can't hurt <laughs> if you want to be in the habit of clicking plus every time. It certainly, it'll take you an extra second, but it can't hurt anything. Um, all right, anyway, so I'm just gonna, just gonna, oh, wrong direction. Just gonna darken this just a smidge because I want to provide a visual, a little touch of visual barrier um, at the edge of the frame, just so that, you know, the eye um, doesn't tend to, to drop out of there quite as quickly. See how that just kind of closes things in, keeps the eye a little bit more in the center. Um, awesome, and I think that's that's more or less, but uh, 
old habits. I can't stop myself. Uh, and another thing that is is worth thinking, and I'll, I'll just pop this in here because it can it can make just a little bit of a difference in terms of leading the eye. Because essentially, that's what all of this is. It's you know, darkening down the sky is is kind of is. Uh, because we tend to look at the brightest things, so you're equalizing that with your background um, to help direct where people are looking, that sort of thing. Um, that thing that I just did at the bottom, darkening that down, that's again to keep keep bounce the eyes in, basically, to make the brightest thing more in the center. Um, and, and, you know, sometimes I'll just do, and it's really sort of quick and cheap and sloppy, um, but with a very feathered brush. You can sometimes just like increase that, not by heaps, eh? Just, just like by, what's that, 0.17. And let's just see here. Yeah, just adding a little bit more, just a little, little sliver of more um, punch through the space where you want people um, to be looking. And uh, just, just one other thing that I'm going to try to fix here, and I don't know how I'm going to go. Um, just because it annoys me in terms of you know keeping the eye, uh, this this bright spot over here that leads straight out the side, um, I don't love. So I'm gonna I'm gonna just try this. I've not done this with the previous. Um, yeah, quite reasonable. Quite reasonable. Let's see. Yeah, it just closes that down a little bit. I'm just curious what's that masked. Yeah, yeah, it's actually selected. Um, selected the bit that I was after quite nicely. Uh, now, has that gone just a touch muddy, perhaps? Might, might have done. So maybe I won't go quite so quite so heavy on that. Yeah, that'll do. That'll do. It was only for experimentation purposes anyway. So just closing things down, keeping the center of the image just a little bit brighter. Um, so now we'll go ahead and flick on the old contrast. Um, oh, you know what? Actually, speaking of contrast, one of the things that I sometimes do, and I don't, I don't go too hard, but so this is the one that's got the whole sky. This is my control line. Um, is, is I'll sometimes put just a smidge, just a smidge of um, clear view on there, just. It gives a little bit, but again, it's one of those things I find it's really easy to overdo. Um, so I will tend in my habit to underdo so that I make sure that I don't overdo. Cool. So I'll turn off those local adjustments. I'll turn on my contrast. Oops, there we go. <clears throat> Let me just, sorry, I just want to see a quick before and after with the contrast see what that micro contrast is doing and how I feel about it. So I sometimes don't always completely love it. I think maybe. I think I do like it for this one. Although I might I might oops, I might put pop it down to you know closer to 10. Sorry, my mouse is freaking out. There we go. I think I've got a hard drive plugged in. I've I've Bluetooth mouse and certain sort of uh, drives that I plug in seem to mess with its signal sometimes. So I'll put a little bit of that fine contrast on to go with the micro contrast. If you're not seeing fine contrast, I believe fine contrast goes with film pack. Um, so you might not have it as well. You might not have these, how I've got the contrast for highlights, midtones, and shadows. You might not have that. Um, so I'm just going to try out my Just go on here. Yeah, I think I don't want to put too much, but I think that is adding to the overall appeal. So a little bit of highlight contrast popped in there. Um, maybe a smidge of mid-tone contrast. Um, and just pump that down. I don't actually want too much shadow contrast personally. Not for this especially. Um, so I'm actually going to drop that a little bit. So that will be lovely. So before and after, before and after. Nice. And I think, sorry, oops, wrong thing. Come up here to locals. I'm just going to grab a graduated filter and pop this here and just bring this down just a smidge. 
Cool. Again, just a snapshot, uh, but I wanted to just show you what I've been what I've been doing with skies recently. Awesome. So hopefully that's been interesting. Hopefully there's been something there that you thought, oh, maybe I'll give that a try. Um, I'm also interested. What what do you do to try and do this kind of balancing? Are there any techniques that you use that that I haven't thought about in this video? Um, you can drop that in the comments if you're if you're keen. Other than that, I will say, have a great week, everyone, and I'll talk again soon. Bye-bye.